Hey, Clifford, are you ready to chat with the mom trash? Did you read the Clifford books growing up or, uh, and how was it different now maybe rereading them, preparing for the role? Oh, yeah, of course. I read like every single book ever created. Um, <laughs> I also watched like every single cartoon. So Clifford was a big part of my childhood and rereading the books to get prepared for Owen and getting prepared for the movie itself was like a, it was like, it was tasting a food that you haven't tasted in a long time. It was kind of like, <laughs> a, it was like, it was like a renaissance. You're like, oh, wow, it's been so long. <laughs> And so that's basically how I felt rereading the books. I read the Clifford books when I was younger, of course, and my grandparents and parents loved reading them to me. And I always knew who he was and Emily Elizabeth, of course. And then after I found out about this role, I went back to the books and, you know, read over them again. And, you know, it was more familiar and be like, oh, OK, yeah, I'm remembering now. And I also love the TV show. And and I remember like the first day on set, I was like having a fitting and they had the books in there. And I was like, oh my goodness, look at the books. And like, I hadn't seen them in so long, so I was just like reading through them. My father has quite a sinister voice. There's a sort of darkness to it. He sounds a little bit like Lord Voldemort. <laughs> and he would read the books to me and it, they would be, it would be quite a chilling experience. <laughs> he was better at reading scary books like The Grinch, amazing. Like that was perfect for his voice. But Clifford the Big Red Dog, he slightly ruined for me. So when I came back to it in later life and read it as an adult, it was much more enjoyable. Well, I had grown up, you know, probably it was my first book. I, I can't really recall. I know it was one of them, you know, and, and I think that's true for a lot of people. And then having kids and then reading them the same book, there's something really powerful about um, ideas that resonate over time. So, you know, the, when you get a chance to kind of bring that into a live action world, you know, kind of reinvented for the first time. It, it's a it's a real opportunity. I, I just felt blessed to be able to take something, you know, that, that I had grown up with and, and now all of a sudden we're making it, you know, for whole new generations. I thought that was really cool. The the great thing about Clifford, you know, is that ultimate what it what it's based on and unconditional love between this girl and this dog and um, the stories are not complex. And when they made the cartoons, the 11 minute versions of it, they were always one idea, very simple, but it really played on the relationship between Emily Elizabeth and, and Clifford. So that is really what we tried to keep at the core of this movie as well. Taking her having moved from Bridwell Island, let's say three or four or five months before we meet her, um, in a big city, there was going to be tremendous amount of adjustments and she's not six or seven anymore. She's a tween at 12 or so. And um, so the story could get a little bit more complex because for Walt and I, it's very important that, that we make the movie for adults that is completely appropriate for children. And um, that, that it has a level of complexity and interest and growth of relationships and all of that that um, doesn't, as a parent or as someone who just remembers the books with, with nostalgia from your childhood, that you can come in and see it and that it, it works for you on the same level that it works for someone else. Kids, it's going to be physical humor. Adults, it's going to be the writing and the de character development and the story. Um, so that's what we try for, four to 104. What was the biggest challenge for you in working with a CGI big old dog? It's always when you deal with uh, CGI, one of the big challenges is to be able to provide all your actors with enough of a presence on the day to have them actually kind of emote in the right ways. So very early on, we realized we were gonna have to kind of create some version of a 10 foot you know, puppet and we had seen um, a play in New York, uh, War Horse, that was puppeted by two guys, and I just could not believe the behavior that they could get off a, off a horse. And I, I said, well, you think we could do this with a with a dog? And we did, and we had a great uh, effects company that came in and, you know, we, they could articulate the head and open the mouth and the neck and two great puppeteers. So when, when, when the actors were acting, they kind of got lost in it. Well, Honestly, it wasn't that much of a challenge because the puppeteers did such an amazing job actually making the dog seem like a real dog. There were many different challenges, I think. I think overall it was easier at some times, but I think fun most of the time. They did quite a lot of it with the puppet of Clifford, and then they also had other 
body parts of Clifford that they would operate, <laughs> like his tail on a stick. They had his head on a stick as well, which was really disconcerting. <laughs> See this beautiful children's character, and then it's just the head on a stick. That was actually used for the scene where I see Clifford for the first time, and I scream in terror. And there was nothing required. He just shoved this head on a pole in front of me, and I was absolutely bricking it and screaming and ran out of the room. And so it was very difficult, really, in the beginning to get that puppy, the 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 wagging, the you know, the the expression. We worked very hard to get those emotions right and a year and a half to get the color right, so. Yeah, that's what hooked my daughter, is the, the very realistic animal, because we have, both Ashley and I have dogs, and that's what really hooked my daughter in for the whole film. If you could have any big pet, red or otherwise, what would it be? Definitely not a cat. I mean, I'm a cat person. I have, I have two cats, but that'd be chaotic. Like, it, it would it spit fur balls everywhere. It just, it'd be not great to handle. That, that cat litter would be gross. Oh God, it'd be so big. You need like a team of ten to just clear it out. You need, you need like a bulldozer just to shovel all of it out. And then where would we put it? You have nowhere to put it. I'd go for a hamster because, yeah, <laughs> I had a couple of hamsters when I was little and I, I think I lost two, which is, I know, so terrible and it was very traumatic. But it happens. Ten foot, but you couldn't lose a ten foot red hamster. <laughs> and it could run around the London Eye as well. <laughs> that would be cute. How about you, Darby? Maybe, um, like a dolphin. I think that would be fun to like have it like a big dolphin like in the ocean in, in, you know you can ride it like through the ocean I think that'd be kind of kind of neat. Yeah it's very free willy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay so we love absolutely love the theme of the film that just because you're different it doesn't mean you're an outcast. Is there anything that has ever made you feel different that now you have come to appreciate about yourself? I think I live in North Carolina and I've always grown and I, I'm growing up here and um Acting has always really been like a big part of my life. And so that kind of made me feel different from like all the other kids at home and like at my school because all my other friends who are actors and actresses live in LA. And so um, my friends here don't do that. And so whenever I would leave for months on end and then come home, it made me feel like kind of different and strange. And I was like, I hope that my friends see me the same as they did in kindergarten and things like that. But now I realize that it's so special and, and it's such a blessing and so unique for kids my age to have these opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I'm super different. I mean, I so I go to this, it's, it, it actually relates. I go to the school, it's called uh, Laksha, Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. And not to brag, it's like the top number one public art school in the world. Go ahead, just, do it, do just it. Just saying. Good job. Good job. But um, yeah, there's a lot of people who I've never seen because this school is such an open, school for like differences there's like lgbtq plus supporters and all these things and it's really cool so being different doesn't matter to me i mean i can be i can be whatever i want that's my opinion i love that yeah i mean i think when i was little i had uh periods of my childhood where i struggled as well and was quite an awkward child and um you know uh felt like i was a bit of an outsider at school and uh you know i think back then if I'd been able to go and see movies like this and realize that I wasn't alone and that this was not a unique experience to me and that lots of people have these kind of like feelings and that it will get better, uh, you know, I would have taken um, a lot of, uh, you know, strength from that. So I think that's why it's nice to be able to put a movie like this out into the world and know that uh, kids around the world are going to be watching it and, uh, you know, connecting with it in a real way. That's why we started our pop podcast is because so many mothers feel marginalized and different and so we always say you're not alone and celebrate your differences so thank you so much for that can you tell us when and where everyone can catch clifford 